Hi everyone, it's Kathy here from House of TOEFL and today we're going to continue talking about speaking question number one. So the question I get the most often from students with regards to speaking question one is how do I come up with ideas? Because we know that in order to get a good score, you need to avoid a lot of long pauses or a lot of uh, uh, uh. So how do you come up with these ideas for question number one? Well, what I'm going to tell you today is not magic. It's not a secret of TOEFL tutors. No, it's just basic information, but it is information I think that will be really helpful to you, even if it seems obvious. The first thing is, the most obvious, is to learn more of the English language. The more you know, the better you can express yourself. For example, a lot of my students say to me, you know, Kathy, I could tell a great story about this question in Arabic or in Spanish and so on. But of course, it is irrelevant to the TOEFL what you can tell in your mother tongue. They are, of course, looking for you to speak in English. So please learn more of the language. The second tip that I have is to practice with all types of questions. So I give my students lists with hundreds of question types, number one. There's lots online, you can get them for free. So that you're prepared no matter what the question is about, whether it's about taking a vacation or whether it's about if a teacher should be friendly or not, if a ch or if a child should be allowed to own a cellular phone. You'll just have a wide range of practice. Practice is the best thing you can do after you've learned the language practices number two. Now I know that seems obvious, but you might be amazed how many of my students don't actually spend much time practicing or when they get home, they go back to their mother tongue and they don't listen to any English music. They don't read English news. They don't watch English movies and so on. They go back to their mother tongue. So they're not really putting in the practice that they need to be putting in. You want to immerse yourself in English as much as you can. The next thing you can do to fill those silences, because we don't want any silences, hopefully on question one, except that little one blip between sentences. Like I feel this way for several reasons. The first reason is, but no more, not many silences besides that. Okay. So the next thing is imagine there's a child near you asking you why, why are you saying that? So you might say, um, I don't think a child should own a cell phone because they tend to be careless with expensive objects. Now there's a three-year-old, an imaginary three-year-old saying, why, why, why? Because they don't pay for them themselves. Their parents buy these expensive objects for them. And so they're not quite as careful as they would be if they had earned the money to pay for the cell phone. So you're answering that imaginary kid. You're answering that question. Why, 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 why? Okay. My next thing is if you're really stuck, you're like, I really, really don't know what to say. Argue against what you're not choosing. Argue against what you're not choosing. So imagine you have the prompt that says, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Children should not be allowed to watch television. And you want to argue that they should be allowed to watch television. You can always make the argument if children don't watch television, then and have a consequence. Okay. If children don't watch television, then they might miss an important lesson. Okay. And then example, for example, when I was a child, I used to watch Sesame street. This is a children's program, which teaches children basic math and manners and politeness. So try to argue against the other side. Okay. So hopefully this video helped you think of some ways to fill those silences and I'll be making more videos soon. Again, this is Kathy from house of TOEFL. Please follow my channel and be Feel free to reach out to me at uh, houseoftoeful at gmail.com 
And if you have any other ideas you think would help the community, uh, the TOEFL student community, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a strategy you use for question one to make sure there's no silences? How do you come up with ideas? What has worked for you? Please leave that in the comment section for me. Thank you so much for watching and as always, good luck on your test.